I'm going to control this right now. You can take control of breathing. You can't control your heart rate, but you can control breathing. But he's basically making the point that the only thing that isn't automatic in the autonomic nervous system is breath. You can control that. You can't control, well, the breath controls the heartbeat. And when you control your breathing, the vagus nerve links it to everything else. This is how yoga and meditation work, in case you were wondering. You have sensors in your lungs that when you slow your breathing, it slows your heart. When you speed your breathing, it speeds your heart. Now, I'm gonna say something about this. In the yogic science, uh, in many places, there is, Yogi Bhajan just mentions like, you know, kind of backhandedly basically, that if you have an, the capacity in the lungs to oxygenate the blood by, I think he called it like 700 cc, I, I have to look it up, but he gives a number, then the whole kind of capacity of holding higher frequency thought forms about your health, about your relationships, about your success, about like, you will basically have the frequency ability to be able to hold higher frequency thought forms around genius, prosperity, um, invention, uh, all sorts of things. You exhale, the more you stimulate sensors that are in your lungs that activate your vagus nerve, that tell Tell your brain that it is okay to be calm. Um, but one minute breath, one minute breath, this is a great example of one. One minute breath is excellent for anxiety. And why? Because you're really extending that exhale. And that is stimulating the vagus nerve and telling the system, it's okay, you can be calm. You do not need to have this anxiety right now. It is so effective for anxiety. Okay, so he just explained why. Ancient times, if you are running from a saber tooth tiger, you don't have time to chill out. And the fact that you have time to take that long breath out, you are signaling via this one organ, the lungs, to the rest of your body that it's okay. And it's kind, and we can chill out. And it gets the message, and it freaking works. Next thing, the Vegas has an evil twin. <laughs> this guy. Mirror, mirror, everybody gets that, all right. So the vagus nerve actually has two branches to it. You have this branch. This is a myelinated sheath. This is from an evolution modern. It's only present in modern mammals. One that have that green system, that social nervous system. It is a fatty sheath around it, like a coaxial cable. He, basically what he's saying here is that there's a fatty sheath around the nerves that have been, that's part of evolution in social mammals. I think this is fascinating. So he'll, that's, that's kind of just the preempt to what he's talking about. When this is activated, that's your green system. It's also got this. This is the ancient vagus. The ancient vagus has no myelinated sheath. It is present in many more ancient animals than humans. It is present in reptiles. When that is activated, that is the red system. There. Okay, so he's talking red system is limbic system. Green system is like basically parasympathetic. You're relaxed, right? So he's kind of using those terms. Um, red system, unmyelinated nerve. There's not a fatty sheath. What is the response? It's a limbic, it's a reptilian response. The ancient unmyelinated vagus also acts as a brake film. Slows you down, just like the green one, just like when you're calm. But instead of slowing you down to a place of calm, slows you down to a place where you freeze and disassociate. And that is what is activated in traumatic instances. Did you get that? So you, you, part of the intelligence of the nervous system is to create a dissociation. And this is the limbic, this is the limbic nervous system or a brain that basically uh, allows you to dissociate when in trauma or something really scary is happening to you. This all is stored where in the back of the brain, the amygdala and, and other kind of parts of the reptilian brain or the limbic brain, um, the brain stem. And we do a lot of stuff here with the brain stem. And guess what else is connected to the brain stem? Stem the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve. That is what makes you into this guy, the reptile who freezes under threat. The vagus branch has two branches. The vagus nerve has two branches. This is where we get the term polyvagal theory, which is the name of this entire talk. And it answers all sorts of questions related to trauma, such as why did I freeze? Why didn't I fight back? Well, 
because your nervous system decided you were about to die and you had no conscious control over that scenario. Don't blame yourself. Why does everything feel, look, and sound different after? Because that system is all connected to every single organ in your body. And depending on how safe you feel or what you've gone through, they all act differently. Why do I hear things differently after? Those middle ear muscles, they're only engaged when you feel safe. So your audiology signal shifts depending on how safe you feel. And you've been through a traumatic instance, chances are you don't feel very safe. An ideological uh, shift when you have not only uh, faced it in the traumatic event itself, but after you may not hear things the same, you may not uh, taste things the same, you may not um, see things the same, Sh colors have shifted, or even your eyesight and all this stuff. This is, this is part of ha having a traumatic event. You're gonna have a lot of people coming to you. So it's just good to understand, well, why does the mantra work? Why does it work that you give somebody a mantra and they start to chant it and it, it you know, things change? Well, why does it work? Well, part of it is that it's a readjusting the inner ear after the traumatic event so that they literally the whole sensory system adjusts and they can start to see and feel life and feel safer in life uh, in just a regular kind of moment um, because of the adjustment of the frequency in the inner ear. So that's part of what happens. Now there's a lot of other, there's mystical things that happen, but that's part of what happens. Why am I always so anxious? Anxiety, let's just say what it is. It's an overactive neuroception system. It's when a body interprets danger where there is no danger. Back in the day, the olden days, danger meant saber to tigers attacking us or strangers throwing spears at us or whatever. Today, it means a missing a deadline or something like this. And these same neural pathways are activated and you feel anxious like everything is an existential crisis. I missed that train, the world is over. I'm late for this presentation, the world is over. And this is our bodies internalizing things and running all of these somewhat trivial modern issues through the same neural pathways that were once reserved for I don't have enough food to survive and you come out feeling like crap constantly. That is what anxiety is. And also realize your bodies, as I said, have a tendency to overestimate danger. So get up. <laughs> why does trauma last for so long and why is it so difficult to treat? That is because trauma isn't psychological. It's physiological. And this is, I think, if you all walk out of here with one talking point, please spread this to the world. People tell people who've been through traumatic instances, get over it. Get some therapy, maybe some drugs. But that ignores what trauma actually is. What trauma is, is an entire rejiggering of how the entire body operates. And by treating it merely as a matter of feeling bad or having you know, something to get over, you completely miss the point. Completely miss the point. And this is not just with trauma. Autism, depression, borderline personality disorder, schizophrenia, etc. So many psychiatric issues all share a litany of physical symptoms that are related to a disengagement of the green system, of the social nervous system. They never feel safe. Auditory hypersensitivity, those middle ear muscles are shut off. Flat facial affect, lack of vocal prosody. They simply speak more monotonely. High heart rate and low vagal tone, I can go into that, and many other symptoms related to the autonomic nervous system. Once you start thinking about all of these syndromes, you realize how similar they are, how closely linked they are, and how really a lot of the differences in them can be kind of taken up to the, the weighting of the nature versus nurture of how the nervous system was compromised or shut off. This is really important because feeling safe, this, this activation of the green system is not an optional state for us. It is crucial to us being happy, healthy individuals. The green state facilitates general health and releases beneficial hormones, in particular things like oxytocin, which are key, 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 key to our immune system and our defense system. It helps learning and critical thinking and productivity. If you ever want to know how to be productive, a lot of people know this, be less anxious, right? Well, how do you be less anxious? The green state gets you there. This is what the flow state is. Without the green system, you've got no flow state. You've got none of this productivity hacking people are talking about. Makes now, we have a technology that allows us to consciously teach the system, even if we've had so much of the red state, um, so much of the kind of trauma, frozen, um, disassociative state, we have a system that teaches us how to 
be in the green, green state, if I'm using his terms, but be in that kind of parasympathetic nervous system where you feel safe, where you feel uh, clear-minded, where you could act if you needed to, um, where you could protect yourself or you could um, make a move if you needed to, so you feel more relaxed. And it, all the things that everything we do, the meditation gives us. Life more relaxing and enjoyable, it makes people like you. We mirror the autonomic state of people around us. Our bodies are constantly scanning everybody and everything we come into contact with and seeing, are you safe? And if you're safe, I'm gonna respond in kind. Are you dangerous? Are you gonna respond in kind? And if you can present yourself in a way that triggers the green system in people, well, they respond in kind and they kind of like you more. You can be more like that guy in the earlier slide who everybody seems to love. It allows bodily functions to operate normally. Remember, everything is bound together. There is a reason that a huge percentage of people who've experienced trauma have irritable bowel syndrome. From a logical perspective, that makes no sense. But what's occurring is all of these things are bound together. And so bodily issues come in kind with all of these issues of the nervous system. And it optimizes the entire human experience. This is the good part of living. It's the green state. Which brings us to one more question related to trauma. Why do I have a hard time socializing and forming bonds after trauma? It's because feeling safe is necessary to form strong social relationships. Safety allows for physical proximity to others. Physical proximity allows for contact. Contact allows for social bonds. Oxytocin is key for this entire process, but this process is not optional. It is a biological imperative just like eating. Our social connectivity is a biological imperative. Never feeling safe sucks. Never feeling safe sucks. Without ever feeling safe, you can't get close to people and you can't form bonds. Without bonds, your bodies are never as healthy as they can be. And your human experience is not optimized. This is especially true for young children with developing nervous systems. Studies have shown, I mean, it's, I'm not going to go into this right now, but every step along the way, like one of the key predictors of health, just physical health, in addition to happiness and social financial success, is just having strong social support networks at a young age. And this is not just, they, these are, they, they basically have done studies to show from um, not just the uh, mental health of the children, but the financial health of the children and the physical health of the children. And as they grow, is all connected to having a strong uh, community and support system. And relationships without feeling safe are not healing. These relationships, as you're healing, if it's an abusive relationship, it's not a healing relationship. You need to get out of that, people. I'll talk to you, I'll help you. It's cool. <laughs> so let's fix it. Let's use the fact that we understand our nervous system now in a way we never did before and create interventions and treatments that allow us to undo this state and activate the green. Okay, so basically he's like, let's do kundalini yoga, but I don't know about kundalini yoga because I'm a hipster uh, in New York who's never done yoga.